This is a video on the repair service and gear motor replacement of the Greenlee EK425L. This repair is for most inline Greenlee lithium tools before the X series excluding the ESG25L. All screw threads on this unit are right hand and will loosen by turning counterclockwise and tighten by turning them clockwise. This repair will require tools and bits that are not sold. Some can be fabricated. For the service you will need seal kit 5004-7957 along with bushings 5010930850109162 5010916 and filter 5010931-6. You will also need special biodegradable hydraulic oil 5205-7878. A few more parts will be replaced in this service including the gear motor, the pressure sensor and the bladder. First remove the single screw on the green Lee label face of the unit. Next remove all the screws on the other side of the unit. Take off the cover. Pull out the retract button, trigger, spring, and link so you do not lose them. Unplug the pressure sensor wire from the control board. Next remove the positive and negative leads from the motor. Unscrew the gear motor from the pump block, but be careful as some units have a set screw in the lower side of the gearbox to prevent it from spinning. Remove the motor cap spring, piston and piston spring from the pump block. Before removing the piston pump housing there is a set screw hidden on the side of the pump block that holds it in place. Remember to remove this, or you will break the piston pump housing. This is where our first specialty bit comes into play. This is a specific bit for removing the pump housing. With a 1 4 inch hex driver put the bit in the piston pump housing and unscrew it carefully as the side walls are thin and prone to breaking. Under the pump housing is a small o-ring. Remove it. Unscrew the screw from atop the relief valve. Pull out the relief lever and relief valve assembly. Be very careful with the needle valve as damaging the tip can cause the unit to not build pressure. In the bottom of the relief hole is the valve seat. Another specialty magnetized tool is needed to unscrew this. There is a seal under the valve seat. Next is the pressure sensor. A special socket is needed with an opening on the side. Feed the wire through and place the socket over the sensor. Unscrew the pressure sensor and there will be a seal underneath it. With these parts removed you can drain the oil. This can be done earlier as well. Remove the clamp by squeezing this part with pliers. I will be using this custom made pump block holder, although it's not needed. Remove the second clamp in the same way as the previous one. Unscrew the head from the pump block. Remove the inside o-ring. Inside will be the check valve. On the diagram they are referred to as a bushing. A special tamper proof bit is needed to remove the check valve. Line up the pins and unscrew the check valve. Using a hose pick, pull up the bladder, being careful not to pierce it. If it is not ruptured then you can reuse it. Under the bladder on the pump block is a filter. The filter must be pierced to remove it, so a new one is necessary. Under the filter is another check valve. This one is removed with an Allen key. Be careful not to confuse it with the other check valve. Screw in the new check valve 5010916 Place in the new filter and using an appropriately sized socket lightly hammer it into place. The other check valve has been revised and a different specialty tamper proof bit is needed to tighten it down. Screw in the new check valve 5010930 Place the bladder over the pump block. Work the bladder ridge into the groove of the pump block making sure it is seated correctly. The same clamps can be used or the seal kit comes with zip ties you can use. I prefer the metal clamps. The seal kit comes with a set of metal clamps that are not sized for this unit. For the zip ties it's pretty self-explanatory. The clamps are different sizes. If you are putting the metal clamps on then there are two tabs that can be squeezed together. When it is squeezed enough you can hook the end of the clamp around the hook it is near. After putting on both clamps, screw the head back on. Next you'll assemble and install the relief valve. Place in and center the bottom seal. Place the valve seat in the specialty bit and screw it into the hole for the relief valve. Put new O-rings on the pressure relief cup. Assemble the relief valve outside of the pump block to protect the needle valve. It goes, needle valve, plunger, copper washer, spring, another copper washer, then the pressure relief cup. Gently place in the assembly without the relief cup. Place the relief cup on top and gently press it down. Add the screw, that holds it down. Screw it down until the pressure relief cup is slightly past the neck of the needle valve. You will most likely have to come back to this to adjust pressure. Put on the relief lever and screw. Next is the piston o-ring. Place it in the piston hole and push it into place. Using the specialty bit screw in the piston pump housing. 
Don't forget to add the set screw in the side to hold in the piston pump housing. Place a new seal where the pressure sensor goes. Place in the pressure sensor and feed the wire through the specialty socket. Use it to screw in the pressure sensor. The oil in the green Lee Gator tools must be a specific biodegradable hydraulic oil. Regular hydraulic oil will eat through certain parts of the tool and cause it to leak. Remove the fill plug from the side of the pump block. Replace the O-ring on it. Fill the bladder all the way up. Screw back in the fill plug. Pour a little oil into the piston pump housing to prime it. Next, place in the spring and piston into the piston pump housing. Place the new gear motor on and screw it in, being careful not to cross thread. Plug the control board back into the motor and pressure sensor. The motor will have a red dot by one of the terminals to indicate where the positive lead goes. Place the unit back into the case. It can only fit one way. Carefully slide in the control board. Make sure the wires are clear from being pinched. Place in the relief button with the arrow facing downwards. Place in the link so that the flat side is against a small button on the control board. Put the spring into the trigger and place it on the plastic guide pin. Press the trigger towards the motor and slide it down on the guide pin making sure the link goes in the slot on the trigger. Carefully place the other half of the case on. Screw in all screws. Note there is a small fine thread screw that goes in this specific spot to hold the case to the pump body. There is also one screw of the same type that goes on the other side of the unit. This unit has a bent die pin. Die pin part number is 50103750 and it comes with one assembly. Start by knocking out the pin from the center of the pin holder. Flip over the head and place the new spring in the hole. Insert the die pin. Set the pin holder on the other side of the die pin in a vise. Carefully press the pin holder onto the die pin. Next we will do testing with the gator eye. Gator eye part number is GATOR, EKG. If you're going to use the gator eye then you will need to download the iPress software from greenlee.com. Link in the description. The gator eye is needed to check pressure. When the crimper is advanced to full pressure it might beep. This is indicating that the unit is above or below pressure. Place a battery on the unit. Place the gator eye on the rear of the unit lining up the LEDs. Give the trigger of the crimper a quick press. The software will read the control board memory. It will show the last five crimp pressures. If it is below or above pressure the tool will have to be opened back up to turn the slotted screw that holds down the relief valve. Turning it counterclockwise will cause the tool to build less pressure and turning it clockwise will allow it to build more pressure. Small adjustments are recommended. To test the tool connect it to the gator eye and on the iPress software click the button that says project start. Fill in the information to your liking. Click activate and the top bar will load in yellow. It will reconnect to the tool and show a green ready status. It is safe to remove the gator eye from the tool. Run the tool right n times to full pressure. Connect it to the iPress software. Click the button that says project stop. It will then show you the status and info of the test. Click continue and it will load a full PDF of all specs of the tests. If it says no faults found then the tool is consistently within pressure. Done.